Good morning, Ricky, and good morning to everybody. That's a classic, man. God, we'll work it out. And I say good morning to everybody. Hope you had a wonderful Easter. And let me tell you, I found out that often God will work it out. But God will work on us while he's working it out. Sometimes we want God to work that thing out. But sometimes God is going to deal with us in the midst of it so that no matter what happens around us, he's able to help us become better in the midst of it. You know, sometimes God will do something about putting us in alignment. The Bible says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you. You know, in your car, sometimes you can feel it pulling to the right and pulling to the right. And you be driving and don't realize your car is sending you a signal that it needs an alignment. And sometimes you'll keep driving it, trying to ignore it, but it's messing with your fuel efficiency. It's putting stress on your engine until you get out of the car, let a mechanic jack it up, change out the tires, and put an alignment in place. Sometimes what God is saying, when you feel yourself stressed out over stuff you normally wouldn't be stressed out over, God is saying, I need you to stop, cease what you're doing. Let me jack you up. Let me put everything back in alignment. Then you can continue on your destination. And this season is not the time for you to be stressed out over stuff that is so small that it's running you crazy. It's the time for you to say, God, as you work it out, work on me that I can be better in the midst of it. You may not change my situation, but your show changed me in it. That's God's word for you today. Let him work it out. Oh, man, that's a good word right there, Uh, Bishop. Thank you so much. And let everybody know how they can find your book, uh, your books, and how they can find your sermons online. Hey, I want everybody to go to YouTube, type in Mount Zion Nashville on YouTube, Mount Zion Nashville. You follow me at Joseph Walker 3. That's Joseph Walker the number 3 on Instagram. Let me know you're going to listen to the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. And I'll send you a good word, too. There it is. All right, Bishop, I got, I got this Daryl Coley right here. Hope y'all enjoy this oh. right here. When the last time you heard Daryl Coley? Been a while. Yes, sir. He's preparing me right here. Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Love you, Bishop. Love you. Show. All right, Rick, it's about the morning show, 12 minutes after the hour, y'all. This segment is being brought to you by. Yeah, brought to you by the Capital One Venture X card. Earn unlimited 2X miles on everything you buy. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. There it is. I appreciate it, Rock T. All right, let's get to the front page. Rita, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. I'm Rita Brent sitting in for Maria. And here's what's trending at News1.com. Seven minors were hospitalized with injuries late Saturday night after a mass shooting broke out in downtown Indianapolis. Police said the children and teenagers who were between the ages of 12 and 17 years old each sustained gunshot wounds in the shooting, which happened just after 11 p.m. local time outside of the city's Circle Center Mall. No suspects have been arrested, but investigators believe more than one weapon was used to kill carry out the shooting a police report filed after the incident identified four boys and three girls as victims all of whom were stable when indianapolis deputy police chief tanya terry gave preliminary details about the incident at a briefing early sunday morning Ooh, that is so sad and i can't believe this happened again but an oklahoma highway was reopened saturday after a bridge over the arkansas river was struck by a barge no injuries were reported on the highway or the barge the bridge crosses the arkansas river where it enters the robert s kerr reservoir which is not far from oklahoma's border with arkansas the highway reopened to traffic around 4 p.m and engineers inspected the structure and found it safe to reopen There was no word on whether officials have determined what caused the bars to hit the bridge, but the news came as engineers worked Saturday to lift a section of twisted steel from the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge in Maryland that was struck last week by a massive cargo ship. Finally, if y'all gamble, uh, the Powerball jackpot climbed to an estimated $975 million after no one matched the six numbers drawn Saturday night. So as the prizes grow, the drawings attract more ticket sales and the jackpot subsequently became harder to hit. And the odds of winning are one in two hundred and ninety two point two million. All right. So that's that. You still got a chance to win. I'm Rita Brandon. Those are your headlines. Good morning, Rock T. What up there, Rita? Appreciate that. March Madness, baby. <laughs> Man's Final Four is officially set. We got UConn, Alabama, North Carolina State and Purdue. 
that Carolina, that North Carolina State and Purdue matchup is going to be dope, man. Battle of the big boys, DJ Burns and Zach Eady. Uh, women's Final Four will be set after tonight. Two big games happening. We got UConn versus USC. That's Paige Beckers versus Juju Watkins. And, of course, the game, maybe of the tournament, LSU, Iowa rematch. Angel Uh-oh. Reese versus Caitlin Clark. Oh, Uh-oh. yeah. Come on, dog. Let's go. It's must-see TV Uh-oh. tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is what it's it gonna is. It's going to be ugly, Rock. Come on, man. It's going to be. Listen. I don't know about that one. <laughs> Hey, we'll get into it here a little bit later on in the show. My next All sports, right. we'll break it down. Uh, shout out to LeBron James, man. He dropped 40 points on the Brooklyn Nets that yesterday, joining Michael Jordan as the only players in NBA history with multiple games of 40 points or more after turning 39 years of age. LeBron has done it twice. Jordan played until he was 40, and he did it three times. It is what it is. Uh, coming up next, man, and putting it down for uh, the Bratton hot spot, uh, who stomped out the box office I'm going to tell you all that next in the hot spot. Make stay tuned. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Gary. Yes. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> well, Ricky, I mean, you know what? People still talking about all the wonderful stuff that happened this weekend. You know, everybody decided all the stars went out hunting, wanted to be um, celebrate Easter with their family. Some people are trying to be critical, like Will Smith. Now, you know, they say Will Smith, he was all smiles, y'all, as he snapped his epic, y'all, Easter selfie, y'all, with his entire family, y'all, where they were all wearing Easter bunny ears. And, you know, I was at an Easter party yesterday. It turned out to where the Easter bunny ears, too. So, but it was very interesting. But I'm surprised. That, you know, I guess he's starting to come out more, y'all, with his family. You know, um, because we didn't know much about his family when he did that big slapping. But now everything is coming out about the family and, you know, he's showing the family and stuff. Now that I guess things are starting to just settle down with the slap. What they call it? Slap gate? Is that what they call it? Heard around the world. (laughs) Oh, well, the slap heard around the world. And And felt around the world. And felt around the world. So, Ricky, I mean, do you think, honestly, do y'all think he's going to really make a a real comeback? Because he's got more movies coming out. So, do you think people are going to accept him now? Oh, yeah. I think think he'll be fine. But, you know, it's going to always be people that, like me, don't want to be like, "Mm mm-mm. They just took it personal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wish wish him the best. But, you know, being a comedian, it just don't rub me the right way. Yeah. But I, mean, I mean, he's, he's apologized and everything. I forgive him. God bless him. But, you know, just not one of my favorites right now. Oh, well, well, we're going to wait till he redeems himself. Hopefully by next year, he be done redeemed himself and his family will all be well. And everybody will love Will and Jada all over again, y'all. Right? <laughs> Mm. Right, we about to find out. <laughs> 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 all right, that's the hot spot, y'all. All right, whatever. Honey. Get over here, y'all. We love Will. <laughs> Spot. Drop it like it's hot. hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot and hot. Yeah, you can catch me at the hot spot. It's the BRA18. All right, y'all, 28 before the top of the hour. Y'all having a hot spot. Sitting in for the brand. What up, Roxy? What up, man? Where we bring you music, movies, and more. Godzilla and King Kong, the new empire, debuted to an $80 million opening, man. This is like, I got to go see this movie, man, because actually they on the same team this time. You know what I'm saying? The Monsters mashup starring Rebecca Hall and Brian Tyree Henry had the second highest opening of the year, falling just short of the 81.5 million debut of Dune Part 2. Projections had put the opening weekend of Godzilla King Kong at closer to 50 million, but they surpassed that. Last week's number one at the box office, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire was second with 15.7 million for a two week total of 73.4 million dollars. Gary, you're going to be excited to hear this, man. Beyond, oh, really? Beyonce's Cowboy Carter album has already broken the Spotify record for the most streamed album in the single day in 2024. What? Rick, come on, y'all. This is also the first time a country album holds the title this year. Before the album even arrived, Texas Hold'em, the single, had been streamed 200 million times. What y'all think about that, man? <laughs> mm, it's beautiful. It's dope. I love the album. You heard it's the whole dope. thing? Oh, yeah, I listened about 20 times. <laughs> oh, really? What, what what songs uh really stuck out? Well, I'm a huge Dolly Parton fan, so she covered Jolene, but she made it her own. And exactly. That, that cover was good. Miley Cyrus. I I wasn't familiar with her music, but now hearing her sing on, on that song with Beyonce, that was beautiful. Uh, the Protector song with, with Rumi Carter on it made me cry and text my own mother. Just It's just so Beyonce. Like she said, it's not a country album. It's a Beyonce album, and I'm glad. Yeah, good. Did she do a song with uh, Willie Nelson? No. He's doing a segue on it. 
he's talking on it. And the lady, Linda Martell, who was like Black Ball from country music back in the day, she's doing a lot of intros on the album as well. So Beyonce woke. Like, it's never just anything from the surface. She's always doing something for the culture, and it's dope. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Real, real quick, I got man. some tea, too, for when um, y'all listen to the tea in the next hour. I'll Uh-oh. tell you about it. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, when Lizzo is through, uh, is through with Hollywood, man, apparently following she's being told on Instagram that she posted on Friday, uh, I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the Internet. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little better How I found than when I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. She continued, I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views, being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look, my character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. Lizzo went on to say that she didn't sign up for this crap and I quit. Y'all, mm. y'all blame me? The thing is, though, I mean, honey, Lizzo was a big star just yesterday, honey. Everybody was raving Lizzo. Lizzo was blowing her flute and doing all her other good stuff like that. Then when these people started talking about her, saying that she was a mean person and doing certain things to them, now she's saying she quit and stuff. Well, that's a personal thing. You know, that's the sad thing about, you know, this entertainment business, honey. I, I mean, I think she's a great talent. She just needs to learn how to just ignore the comment section of yeah. stuff. Like, like mm-hmm. don't start, don't believe the hype and don't believe the criticism. Just do what you do. Period. Yeah. There it is, man. Yeah, I hate it though. It made me feel some kind of way. I really hate it. Yeah, don't don't but, quit, man. If that's your passion, it's what you love doing, Lizzo, keep doing what you're doing. Don't worry about all that doggone haters, man. But, so. but not just that though, Tia, but why we say it? Don't say nothing. I wouldn't say nothing. Yeah, just keep I wouldn't on say moving. No, yeah, I would just keep on I would not say nothing. I wouldn't let people know that you're getting to me or whatever and stuff like that. Just move on. Don't say nothing. All you're that letting t- the trolls win. Yeah, t- I'm quitting. Right. People probably saying, we don't care if you quit. Hell, we didn't even know you came. So just leave it alone. And most of the people criticizing, they, they ain't doing nothing with their life. Right. And they're not musicians either. No. There it is. That's what's hot, man. Well, we got the wake up calls coming up next. Call us right now. 866-9-RICKY. 866-9-R-I-C-K-E-Y. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, Rick's Mountain Morning Show. It is about that time for Rock T's joke of the day. That's right, y'all. He's selling out venues all over the country. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. All right, Rock. Which insect can tell time? Which one? A cockroach. Uh-uh. Oh, my God. Come on, Rick. No. Man, I start back looking at my phone. Come on, dog. <laughs> Clock roach. Damn, Clock roach. Special wow. game. <laughs> Riddle. I just, I just, I just uh, left the room. Come on, Riddle. <laughs> Riddle, you don't have nothing like. Come on, Riddle. Uh-uh. It, it's time for you to do something else. Why, right. why you holding your laugh in? <laughs> you out of time. <laughs> Special game. Nah. Oh. Crystal just called me and asked me, do I know a good divorce lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, is that bad? She just texted me. Oh, Gary. <laughs> Honey, he reaching for that one. I'm sorry. Oh, no, don't. That's a reach. That's yeah, pretty terrible. Think about it, Rick. Yeah. Which insect can tell time? I thought no, about dog. it. I heard you the first time. Oh, you got to be. A uh, clock oh, roll. No. <laughs> no. And then you, you laughing then at it as funny as it is. And then you took her to death, too. Yes, sir. That, that, that's, that's what's, you know, oh. that's the bad part. All right, we're going to expand your vocabulary with Gary with the T up next. <laughs> capital T, capital A, capital O, capital T. B-I-C-T-H. Job. J-O-B. It's time for Gary's Word of the Week. And you know this, man. Let's watch y'all 10 minutes before the top of the hour. Y'all time for Gary's Word of the Week. What up, Gary? Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And I have the word of the week, y'all. Now, this week's word is antagonistic. Antagonistic. Mm. And it's pronounced antagonistic. T-I-C. Now, it's spelled A-N-T. A-G-O-N-I-S-T-I-C. Now, the Mm. definition, y'all, is to show open hostility or opposition to someone or something. Now, here's an example of how you use this word in a sentence. I have never officially declared my preference, but I would definitely be antagonistic toward any woman offering her body to me for pleasure. Mm. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> what a hell of a sentence. Yeah, say that sentence again. That. Oh. God. This is you speaking, so say the sentence again. I have never officially declared my preference, but I would definitely be antagonistic toward any woman offering her body to me for pleasure. What does that mean again? Uh, well, you ain't going to be antagonistic. Antagonistic, cause ain't no woman gonna offer her body to you for pleasure. I promise you that. No, it, it, it means if a woman did that. offer her body to you, you would be openly hostile toward that woman. Oh. Yeah, Rita, isn't that happen. offensive? What's offensive? Yeah, me having that word and using it like that in a sentence. It's not offensive. It's true. <laughs> right. Well, would, would you would you be opposed or show yeah. hostility? Not oh, hostility, well. but I would be opposed. Well, that's antagonistic. There you go. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Gary with the team with the word of the day. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, okay. I'm antagonistic to a rock last joke. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> nah, Not going well. Rock-root. What a terrible way to start off a Monday. I mean, honey, right after Jesus rising. Right. <laughs> All right, John. <laughs> More Rick's Final Boy, the show coming up. Y'all, it's about that time for Gary. I uh, got the tea in the cooler today, four minutes after the hour. What up, Gary? Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Monday, a beautiful, beautiful day out the neighborhood, in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. Ricky, this is a touching story, y'all. Al B. Sure, y'all. He is speaking out, y'all. Now, they're saying y'all that Al B. Sure seemed, y'all, to suggest that his coma, y'all, from a couple of years back might be tied to Diddy, honey, somehow. And they're saying that he's also opening up, y'all, about where things stand with his beautiful son, Quincy. Now, they're saying that the R&B single show Face Friday, honey, at an Equal Justice Now was in Los Angeles where um, he was promoting his equal access to health care initiative alongside our friend of the morning show, Ben Crump. And they said he addressed y'all the crowd at one point with a cryptic nod y'all to the Diddy situation going on. Now Al said y'all that he's working on a film project that's telling his life story, and in the same breath y'all they said he said the um, public will finally y'all get a chance to see how he finally and how he really ended up y'all in a coma back in 2022. Now they're saying that you heard about Al's health scare that year, and he um, you know suddenly fell ill, and he fell into a coma, Ricky, back in late summer 2022, and he was incapacitated for three whole months, y'all. But miraculously, y'all, he woke up and when he's working toward a full recovery. And they're saying, y'all, that an official cause was never offered, you know. Now, isn't that something that Al is starting to tell this? You know, people wondering, because there was a lot of stuff people were wondering about um, Al and, you know, what went down with Kim Porter and stuff, how she um, may have died and stuff. So people kind of like trying to like, mm. Yeah, there's some cons- conspiracy theories going on out there. I'm not going to repeat any of them, but you can look it up. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so, but it's very interesting. They say, um, Al is also clarifying, y'all, um, what he was trying to convey when he recently asked his son Quincy to come home amid all that drama going on at Diddy's, um, at his life, uh, you know, right now. Now, he said one thing he is glad that he's glad that his son was not at the mansion when they did, you know, the raid and stuff like that. So he was glad, um, that um, Quincy wasn't at, um, Diddy's LA home when the raid went down earlier, um, this week, y'all. So, but he just needed his son to know that he has somewhere to go. Yep, and I guess that's what he, 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 and he's doing that too. So, you know, I mean, it's interesting. So we're going to follow this story, but it, it's, it's a scary situation. That, you know, people wondering if um, if Diddy's going to lose his career or what's going to happen with him. Is he going to go to the pen? What's going to happen? He's apparently back at home in uh, at Star, on Star Island just chilling. Oh, he's back at Star Island at his Miami that's place? That's what I saw reported last night. Really? Well, we're going to follow that and see how this all turns out. 
All right, moving on in other celebrity news, y'all. Oh, Rita, this is interesting. It's been reported out that Beyonce fans, baby, all of the fans are confused, honey, over five missing tracks, honey, on Cowboy Carter. Vinyl film, they said it's a theory that what really happened, honey. Now they say Beyonce's Cowboy Carter arrived, y'all, Friday to critical acclaim, ushering listeners, y'all, to her new era. But they say some fans who received their physical copies were confused, honey, that tracks, including on the digital release, were missing, honey. They said four of them was over Omitted from the CD and fired from the LP reader. Now, they said throughout the weekend, fans have complained, y'all, online that their Cowboy Carter vinyls were missing the song Spaghetti, Flamenco, oh. The Linda Martell Show, Yaya, and Old Louisiana. Now, they said on the CD, Flamenco, honey, was included, but the other four were not. And some pointed out that Beyonce's e-commerce store promised, y'all, an additional song on the CD version of the album, but no additional tracks was included on the disc, and fans think that Flamenco, y'all, might just be an additional song. Now, which one did you hear again, Rita? All of them. This really? sounds like a uh, sabotage. Uh-huh. Well, Somebody who don't want Beyonce they done took her songs off the, the vinyl. Mm. That's crazy. Being Makes antagonistic. So. No, I'm lying, but that's, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying that might be I'm what I'm sure they're going to fix it, though. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they got to. Yeah, they're going to have to That's fix it. Crazy. See, I would be very angry. Now, they said they're hoping that, you know, um, that Target is going to do something and they all come out on the um, one that's going to be released through Target or what have you. But I would be very angry had I rushed out to go buy um, this woman's album and, and she don't have all the songs on it. So now they say once um, Beyonce, they say once by Beyonce on Yaya, they say which was excluded from the vital edition and another by Dolly Parton, y'all, on the introduction to Tyron. Have you heard all those songs, Rita? Because I haven't heard any of them. Yeah, I've heard all of them. Really? A zillion times. Like, yeah, on Apple Music, they're all on there. But vinyl is expensive. Like, you literally want everything on it. Really? Now, they say Beyonce yeah. and her team, honey, um, they keep their cards close. Now, they say some are holding out hope that an additional bonus track might end up on the Target edition of the album. But they say for now, mm-hmm. physical media enthusiasts, honey, will have to settle for a shorter listening experience. And I'd be very angry if I had to experience a shorter listening experience. If I wanted to, if I paid for all this stuff from Beyonce and they're not producing it, that's not a good look at all, honey. That's not a good look. That's why they already didn't want us in country and now you didn't do country and cutting the people short of the country songs. That's not a good look. That's well. Mm. Mm. Well, we're going to pray, honey. Hope they'll come. And you said you like Jolene, honey. I like the original Jolene. Now, the Jolene version that Beyonce did, she kind of blackened it up. Because instead of when <laughs> Dolly Parton said, Jolene, please don't take my man. Um, um, Beyonce, do, um, Jolene, don't come for my man. Now, that's a different version. Yeah. Beyonce uh-huh. made it a whoop that trick song. I like yeah. it. Uh, yeah. uh, I can't wait to honey, see how this all turn out. But congratulations, and hopefully she put the songs on, and they, people get their songs that they paid for. Because if you're paying for these songs, you want your money's worth. All right. Yeah. The Kahlua today, honey, is one of my favorite Kahlua. My Kahlua today, y'all, is after Easter. On the, on the high end, you say after Easter, and on the lunch, you say beautiful brown. That's your Kahlua What kind of Kahlua is that? What, what, in beautiful brown, after Easter? Yeah, yeah. after Easter. Back to the so it, it go from all the pastel colors to brown. <laughs> Man going on. Y'all give it up for Gary Brown. Gary! <laughs> Ricky, here we go. My name is Sinead. I'm from Chicago, and I'm calling to wake up my kids and my husband. Y'all have a great day. This is Clyde from Fort Lauderdale, and I want to wake up my stepmother. Wake up, wake up, wake up! Good morning. This is Pookie calling from Memphis, Tennessee, calling to tell my sister Tara to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, girl. Get to the schoolhouse. Good morning. This is Joyce calling from Jacksonville, Florida. I would like to wake up Katrina Newman. And all of you have care employees and have Ursula to tone it down a little bit today. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Y'all Rick's Smiley Morning Show, 24 minutes after the hour, y'all. Coming up, we got Ricky's DMs. You don't want to miss that. Up next, Rick's Smiley Morning Show. 
<laughs> All right, Reese, bottom morning show. It is about that time, 28, 28 minutes after the hour, y'all. Now, now each week, uh, we read a question from Ricky Smiley Morning Show's DM. And this morning, we got a DM from a woman in Atlanta who has a friend who can't stop stealing. Special K, what happens? Okay, so this woman says, my friend shoplifts on the regular and won't stop and don't seem to feel bad about it. It's always small items, food, snacks, and personal items. She seems to think it's no big deal, and she says that she's always done it, but damn it, we are in our 30s. Who the hell does this? <laughs> I said something to her about it the other day when we were in the grocery store, and she picked up some deodorant and a couple things from the makeup section. Now, I have a real job within the city, uh, in the city administration office, but she works from home as a call center worker, so she don't seem to be concerned about the repercussions of getting caught. But for me, I have colleagues, and it would be really embarrassing to be caught up in some foolishness like this. I don't want to end the friendship over this. We've been friends since high school. But do y'all think I need to suggest an intervention, or am I tripping? Yeah, it's time to distance. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> time to distance, man. R- <sighs> Rita, what are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it's, it's a no for me. Because of what she said, you know, when you steal, they might take both of y'all to jail because they think y'all in on it together. So yeah. right. it's a no for me. But do you end the friendship over? She said we've been friends since high Like, we all got friends from high school that, yeah. you know, like, I, I got friends from high school that I can be friends with, but we can't hang out because they do stuff that I don't do or can't do. Right. You ain't got to end it, but you can distance yourself like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm good. But it but sounds like they hang out a lot. Still at your age, Special K, you got friends that do stupid stuff. It, Mm. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Yes. That, which which makes it even more ridiculous. Yeah. Like, bro, you like, come on, man. Like, I got friends that still, yeah, do stuff, and I'm like, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> like, like what? <laughs> I, I, I don't want to get man. too. I don't want to get too specific. What they do, dog? Mm-mm. He just told stuff you stuff that I ain't trying to be involved in. I'm, I'm like, man, I got grandkids. I can't be. Out- what are you yeah. doing? Like, well, but they steal your friend, though. You know exactly. I have friends that will steal. I mean, if you know your friend steal, if we go into the store together, honey, I'm going to the left. You going to the right? And then hey, I'm girl, right. Girl, 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 when you came to my house, what I told you, I said, keep your hands clapping. Yeah, so I can talk about, yeah, I don't know why you talk. And I don't steal, but I'm gonna talk about. When you come in here, keep your hands clapping, keep clapping, honey, until honey, I'm um, leave. Yes, so I'm gonna make I'm sure you ain't nothing. stealing nothing. Uh, and I didn't steal nothing. I mean, it's not so much stealing everything from your house. It's just borrowing because half of the time you don't use the stuff. So why not, you know, just let us know. Wait a And Rick, now you, you know a lot of people, and you got a lot of people that you've been friends with over the years. You don't have nobody in your friend circle, even if it's a loose circle, that you just can, we can talk, but we can't hang. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah cause, cause see, the thing about it is you got those people, you don't know what they've been into before they got with you. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And somebody come looking for them uh, to do something to them for, for what they was involved with. In, 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 and what usually happens in a situation like that, you end up catching a bullet. Yep. And uh, yep. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to die because I'm booked. Well, not even a literal bullet, but just, <laughs> you know, they like this person stealing. Y'all get caught. They don't care. They work at a call center. They don't care. You work for the city. Like, you got right, a right. real gig. <laughs> you, you can't be associated with. So, yeah, you can't. You can't. Yeah, you can't hang with them. Uh, so uh, let us know your thoughts. Uh, y'all hit us up on our website at rickysmilingmorningshow.com. rickysmilingmorningshow.com. More show coming up. Yesterday, man, happy Easter, happy belated Easter. Everybody, hope y'all had a, uh, enjoyed your family, all that good kind of stuff. Listen, John Lyon, what up, boy? Oh, I'm sorry, John Lyon. John Lyon. What the hell? Damn phone lines acting up. Black Tony, what y'all lying? Hey, man, turn me, man, turn, man, I don't even want to get out of the so What? What y'all lying? Y'all lying in, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, I don't know what y'all lying in. He, he, ain't not, he ain't none of my old, old special bill. I don't know what the hell he is. That's What's wrong with his boy. mic? That's your boy. You need to call him. I don't know. I'm, I'm dealing with my own problem right now. <laughs> Did you have a good Easter? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I got to. I got to find. Well, I, I like. Say, I like the guy. Hey, I like the guy to find that church. Say, say what up, uh, Rita Brent, uh, and, and then tell us what happened at church. Hey, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up uh, Sharif? Hey, Rita. Look. Hey, look. Hey, look. <laughs> hey, look. Rita. Look. Yeah. Rita. Black Tony told me you was one of his favorite comedians. 
Oh, Emma. Yeah, Thank like, you, Black like Tony. She's funny. She be singing them songs and stuff. She's funny. And she cute, too. Look, shout out that's neither here nor there. This, <laughs> yeah. this what's going on right now. I got I got put... I, I mean, my mama mad at me. My grandma mad at me. Everybody mad at me because I got to fight with the little boy at church. I mean, what? he no little boy. He like 13, but... <laughs> man, still, though, I didn't, You can only take so much before you swing on somebody, son. What happened? They had the they had the East Egg they had the East Egg hunt after church yesterday, and um I'm out there. I'm shocked. I'm shocked you went to church, but I, but I, a lot yeah. of people don't know you you go to church almost every Sunday. Yeah. I went to What's church. What's the name of your mama, church? Um, some some kind of Baptist, some Baptist, some Baptist. Oh, um, some Baptist. I don't know. <laughs> don't Look, Shadi, yeah. I don't want out those going during during the East Egg hunt. First is first they were trying to. Trying to scrimmage on me, talking about you, you grown, you can't be outside. I can find edge, just like everybody else find edge. So I'm out there with the cheer, trying yeah. to find some edge, and I ain't, and I got hay fever, and I kept sneezing when I was digging down in the grass, and I, and, and at the end, bottom line is, I ain't find no edge. All the kids found edge. My basket was empty, and they started teasing me. So they started talking about, oh, you grown, you grown, you stupid, you ain't find no edge. <laughs> You ain't find no ears, grown man. You ain't find no ears. You yeah. know, singing the little songs. I'm like, you ain't find no ears because you stupid. And I got mad. So I was, and then me and the little boy, he kept doing it. Kept talking about you stupid. And you what, they was saying, no what they were saying? What they were singing? Tell me, you ain't find no ears, grown man. You ain't find no ears. You ain't find no ears, grown man. You ain't find no ears. <laughs> I just got, I just got a little upset. And I was, but hold on, Black Tony. Hey, Rita, that thing got a little hit to it, right? It's, it's a little bop. Do it again, Black Yeah, Tony. yeah, because you be making some. How was you singing, Rita? <laughs> like, you ain't find no egg, grown man. You stupid. Hey. You stupid. You yeah. ain't find no egg, yeah. grown man. You stupid. You stupid. <laughs> I got mad. I got yoked that little. My and, yoke. and, and then when they when, when they kept saying you ain't found no egg, that thing made you feel a certain kind of way. Yo, cause I'm like, cause I'm like, why y'all go? Did you beat the little boy ass? ass? Did you beat the little boy ass? I ain't really swing on him. I just yoked them up and slammed them up against the wall. I said, hey, boy, you keep talking. I'm going to... And then they right. think, I know, man. They, man, they done told me I can't come back to church. Oh, you Don't can't go back to church? Yeah, they thought I can't come back to church until I apologize. And, man, it's just a lot. No, it's yeah. just a you, lot. Ain't it's new new egg, you ain't got no egg, old man. You ain't got no egg. You ain't got no egg. You ain't got no egg, old man. Girl, man. You ain't got no eggs. Black Tony. <laughs> I ain't got to take this for y'all. What? <laughs> Use the word cinnamon in a sentence. Lord, please send a man that is not going to cheat on me because I am so tired of Brandon and his line. Like, please, Lord, just send a man. Send a man, Lord. Are you f***ing kidding me? Use the word Baghdad in a sentence. Girl, you look good. Won't you back that ass up? Hey, wow. Hold it. He's half man, half woman. It's Gary. I wanna hip you to the teeth. Mm -mm, it's Gary, baby. All right, Rick's Mountain Morning Show. Four minutes after the hour, Gary has the tea and the color of the day. Gary, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Monday, a beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. Serena Williams, y'all, they're saying, honey, that Serena Williams' face seems to be changing more and more, Ricky, as the days go by. According to MTL, they learned that the tennis star unveiled her newest face recently while watching her ex-boyfriend, Grigor Dimitrovov, play tennis. Now they're saying after the match, Serena went over to Gregor and they shared a few laughs together and they were just touchy feeling one another and stuff. And they're saying with, with Serena being a married woman, they were shocked that that would happen. They say it looked like the two still have a ton of chemistry together. Now I've seen Serena's face and I'm sure y'all may have seen her face. It does look a little different, but it almost looked the same. But people are saying she's looking like the cowardly lion. But uh -uh. I, 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 yeah, but no, yeah. nah, man. I yeah. think Serena, Serena wow. is beautiful, and I think her uh, accomplishment and everything uh, that she's accomplished mm -hmm. exceeds more than anything. I think she looked great, though, Gary. Well, she does look, I mean, she look good, but she, they saying cowardly like her daddy, and people wondering, but you know, it's just, it's. It's very interesting, though, that people would say that. Her face is kind of strong. They talk about but, everybody. Last week, mm -hmm. it was Vivica Fox. Now this week, it's Serena. Yeah, because yeah, Vivica and Madea did kind of resemble. They had the side-by-side -side picture, and, you know, people were saying that. You so. need to stay off the Internet. I, I do. Rita, what you think, honey? You're a beautiful woman. What you think her face look like? 
I, I like her body. Everything is natural, and uh, that's what I appreciate. But, I mean, she, she dealt with a lot of criticism when she was playing tennis. So, I mean, just, just let the woman live. Just let her live. Yeah. Well, they letting her live with her face, but they still saying, you know, that it kind of looks different. But anyway, we love Serena, honey, and, you know, she's a great person. Mm -hmm. so. Same people saying that mm -hmm. they couldn't hit a ball uh, across the net if mm -hmm. they tried. They if they tried, honey. They couldn't do it if they tried. All right, moving on in other celebrity news, y'all. Jenny My Baby and her hip-hop superstar, ex-husband of B, honey, Jesus, she said, honey, she want her marriage, she want that divorce, honey, to be public, honey. Now, they said the two split after Jenny moved out of her family. What, they embarrassed him? Nah, I guess so, honey. After the two um, moved, you know, her family into the rapper's home, and they said Jeezy felt as if he lost control of his life, y'all. Now, they're saying, y'all, that Jeezy, um, now that Jeezy wants and, honey, he's exercising the couple's prenuptial agreement which guarantees that Jenny may or Jenny will get very little, if any, honey, from her husband. Now, they're saying Jenny is out of blood, honey. They say this girl, oh, she want blood real bad. They say, honey, now Jenny asked the judge to deny her strange husband Jesus' request to seal filings in their ongoing divorce. Now, Jesus, I'm um, asked that the court to seal the divorce to protect the family's privacy, Ricky. But they said the talk show host is opposing Jeezy's motion to seal those doggone records, honey. Now, they said in her new motion, Jeannie said that she had refrained, honey, from detailing specifics in her divorce filing, aiming for an amicable resolution, which remains her goal. And she said that since the commencement of these proceedings, there has been indeed, honey, increased media attention, which was a foreseeable consequence given the party's celebrity status, honey. And she also added that the timing of Jesus' motion to seal six months into the proceedings raises questions regarding his motivations for trying to limit the, pro the public's access to the case. She said she wanted out there. And nonetheless, they say Jenny contends that sealing the court records at this time is unnecessary and unwarranted. Mm. Now, Gary, what are your thoughts? Oh, Lord. Miss Jenny seemed to be a, honey, you know, and I like Jenny and I like Jesus too, but honey, this girl, she's a woman scorned, honey, and I guess maybe Jesus promised her the world, honey, and it's taking the judge to give it to her, because honey, right now she wants this, I guess, but what we gonna find out once it becomes public, public, you know? So what 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 is gonna, I mean, what is gonna prove and stuff like that, you know? I don't understand that, but she yeah. wants it to be known. But she does want that prenup to be overturned. She wants her money, and she should get something after she didn't been with him all these years. And but he you can't overturn her. a prenup, can you? Well, a judge could do anything. Look like to me, honey. I mean, you know, Jenny is a woman of non-color, so I'm sure they will work it out for her. But a contract is a contract, and if she signed it, and that's what it is, but that's what it is. But she could have said she signed it under duress. Okay, she, she. but why does he owe her a lot of money? I don't, I don't understand. Because she gave him a baby. Yep. Okay. He's paying you. Yeah, baby, baby right? had one together. He's taking care yeah. of the baby. Yes, yeah, half, half his baby. A judge can rule it unconscionable. Unconscionable. I mean, what? Uh, he can over. He can overturn it. That's right, honey. So he can overturn a prenup. Yep. Yeah, Rick is just a piece point? of paper. No, it's a contract. It don't matter. But if this woman could prove that, honey, what she's going to prove about him or whatever, I'm, I'm the really going to need a lawyer to explain that one to well, me. You because do. Well, what's the purpose of signing a prenup if a judge can overturn it? Exactly. Right. I guess the situation when they sign it, but what it says is uh, what qualifies as an unreasonable or an unconsciousable uh, case varies by case by case, but the prenup can be overturned if a judge decides the agreement is too one-sided to be fair. That's right, and if he's taking everything from Jenny and throwing it out in the streets like a wounded okay, animal, uh, she needs to get her, um, her, her coin. A, a, a prenup ain't gonna, it's, it's not going to be fair because if you got $10,000 in the bank, and the other person is homeless, and y'all get a divorce, and you want to keep your ten thousand dollars. How is that wrong? How is that That's wrong? Because I was with you, and you know okay, we. Okay, that don't matter. I was okay, with but you she, too. But, so. but we was with you. Yeah, but I mean, one shouldn't leave, honey, without um, at least having something. She's and not. She's not destitute. She has her own money. Yeah, well, but still, she needs his money too because she got to raise that please. child. With okay, him. is he is no, he gonna sir. get any money from the real? Well, I mean, he may. I mean, she don't have no. The real ain't going on no more, Ricky. The real being canceled, so she don't have no money. That child, she got that child, honey, little uh, Marco. I'm sure she's is. fine. Okay, well, let let him have the child. Let him have the child half the time. Then that'll take some of the burdens off her, so she could go to work. Well, we're gonna we're gonna see, honey, because she's been fighting, man. This been going on. You're not gonna keep letting men get drug on here like that. Well, if men, we keep, got rights too. If he would have been with Keisha. 
as in Cole, that wouldn't have been a problem. It would have been, been okay. Be quiet. Well, I'm gonna call that be quiet. <laughs> All right. Wow. And then my quick for free story, y'all. Nick Cannon, baby, they said he's on the bench. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's the problem. Sitting on the yeah. he sat on the damn bench, and then um, Jenny came and honey won the, the game. With them so. dockets backed up. <laughs> <laughs> you started. <laughs> Everybody got quiet. Yep. <laughs> Should have burned all your clothes. Thank you. <laughs> now, the color today, honey, is one of my favorite colors. My color today is yes, after Easter. On the high end, you say after Easter, and on the low end, you say beautiful brown. That's your color for today. Nice. Earthy color. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Gary with the team. Gary! Did you see that post? People are talking. Here's what's trending on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, Ricky Smiley Morning Show, 25 after the hour. A man uh, is out. Uh, a man is out thousands of dollars after he says that he was drugged at an Atlanta bar last month and then kidnapped and robbed. Uh, the Atlanta Ooh. Police Department is looking for several similar cases. And what's scary is the man said, I don't remember ever leaving the bar. I don't remember the talking to anyone, said one of the victims. The man in his mid-20s says he was bar hopping for a friend's birthday, and then he blacked out and woke up the next morning without his Rolex ring, and his wallet was gone as well. The thieves ran up thousands on his debit and credit cards, and what's even more scary is that authorities say the crime does not appear to be isolated. There's actually been an uptick in similar instances where the victims were drugged at bars and robbed. All right, joining us this morning, we got the one and only Dr. MJ Collier. Dr. Collier, uh, first of all, good morning, happy to have you. Hope you uh, hope you are blessed, and thank you for coming on in our Dr. Carly, let everybody know what uh, date date rape date rape drugs are and how do they work. Uh, thank you very much, Ricky, and good morning, Rita. Special studio guest, it's always a pleasure. And this, Ricky, this this is such a timely topic, particularly we both got young people in our lives, and I know every time my daughter goes out, I'm really concerned uh, about you know I tell her you know to watch her drinks and make sure that she doesn't accept drinks from anybody. This has really been uh, a big problem, man. They actually started reporting this in Atlanta as as early as 2021, but the problem is that uh, when you when you've been uh, drugged, so to speak, it, these are the symptoms that people will get. You get disorientated, you get nauseated, you lose coordination, you get headaches, sometimes you get respiratory depression, brain fog, and weakness. So you lose your ability to fight back or even know uh, how to control your body when people may say, oh, she just had a little too much to drink or he just had a little too much to drink, so I'm going to help my friend out to their car or get them home. And so even, you know, club security will uh, assume that the person is really over over drink and under the influence of alcohol. So this is a big problem. But these drugs uh, really are, are pharmaceutical-grade anesthetics and drugs like uh, ketamine and uh, gamma hydroxy acid, GHB, rofenol or rufis, ecstasy even. They're putting these these medications in people's uh, drinks, and of course, sometimes they give them too much, and these people can even, they're very susceptible to overdose, or if it reacts with a drug that they may already be taking for another health issue. Uh, sometimes even antihistamines that people take because they have allergy symptoms, and then you, you put a benzodiazepine, which is the class of drugs we're speaking about, on top of that, it can really... Uh, suppress a person's respiratory function and make them susceptible to, you know, really bad outcomes. So this is really a problem, and we want to make sure that people are very conscientious about what to do uh, when they're out in the social environment. So, Dr. Collier, how long after you start feeling these symptoms, like how long do they last? How long does it take you to recover and come back to? Well, you, you can come back as early as, as an hour, but some of these drugs will last 8 to 12 hours. And so that's the other thing, you know, that oftentimes a person, they'll just take a person and dump them somewhere, and they wake up the next day, don't know where they are, disorientated, missing their cell phones, their wallets, sometimes their clothes, because sexual assault is a part of this as well. Sometimes they just rob the person, and that's what they usually do when it's a man involved. But sometimes they sexually assault the men as well. But women is usually a combination of robbing and sexual assault. So, uh, again, some of these drugs will last for uh, six hours. Some will last for eight hours. And some of them can be detected in your system for 24, 36 hours later. So it's important that if you think that you have been sexually assaulted, you have been spiked, so to speak, not sexually assaulted, that too, uh, you need to go to the hospital and be evaluated. Uh, have your blood drawn. And there are several ways they can check. They can do a blood test. They can do a urine test. They can even test your hair. Uh, your hair follicles will have uh, 
traces of these medications in them, and so it can tell whether this has happened to you before and, and just trend really what's going on with your symptoms. So uh, the problem is that police are really not aware of this and healthcare providers. You bring somebody to the hospital, they're, they're acting this way, they're going to assume they're drunk as well. So you have to really explain to them, uh, which the person may not be capable of doing, so you have to have a trusted friend with you, stay in groups, and if anybody in the group starts experiencing those types of symptoms, then you need to get them to the hospital to be evaluated. And a drug test, a toxicology test at a hospital under these criminal circumstances should be free. But you got to make sure the hospital understands that and that you're bringing them in for that. Otherwise, you know, a drug test in an emergency room could be, you know, $1,000. So we want to make sure that the individual is doing that. So you know what happened to you because these drugs will remove the memory. You don't know where you've been, what you've been doing, uh, and what's been done to you. So all of those things are very important. And it's amazing that, you know, these uh, neighborhood pharmacists are learning how to do this and taking advantage of people. But it's happening in more upscale areas. This is not something that's happening in your, your local neighborhood bar. They're going to places that they know people have, usually higher incomes, more money. They got on more flashy jewelry, et cetera. And, uh, and so this is a problem, and this is who they're targeting. Dr. Carr, is there a way to tell if your drink has been tampered with? Like, is there a certain look, taste, or smell? To kind of be aware uh, well, of? One of the things they say, if, 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 your taste, if your drink tastes funny in any form or fashion, but the most common thing is that it tastes salty. So if you're getting margaritas with salt on the rim, you probably won't be able to tell the difference. But other than that, any other drink that doesn't taste right, don't keep sipping it trying to determine whether it's made right or not. Just discard it and uh, because it could have been contaminated. And watch your cocktails. Don't go to the dance floor and leave your cocktail unattended. Right. Don't, uh, you know, if you see that or uh, if you feel it's been tampered, just discard it, throw it away or, or whatever. But stay on top of that. Do not accept cocktails that have been sent to you. And don't accept cocktails you're like from a, a, a punch bowl that anybody can put anything in. You're just scooping, you know, taking a scoop and making a drink. So, you know, those are just uh, some common sense things that are being recommended for people to be careful and conscientious when they're in that environment. All right, uh, Dr. Carly, uh, so uh, if anybody want to reach you and have any other questions concerning this situation, uh, I'm sure you're probably going to do a live on it on your Facebook Live, which you usually do on Wednesdays. Let everybody know how you can be reached. Ricky, I can be reached on all social media at Ask A S K D R M J. Ask Doctor M J. And uh, again, this is a very important topic. When I read this article, I was glad that you were sensitized to it. And uh, so, this is the thing. So, you know, if you're going out, you start throwing up, you start feeling nauseated, you just start feeling like something is not right. By the time it kicks in, you may be too impaired to control yourself. So, be careful and conscientious about that. Be safe. Go out with trusted friends. Stay in groups. One of those situations that we just talked about, Ricky, a guy was with three friends. He decided They decided to leave. He decided to hang out a little longer. His next drink was contaminated, and he woke up the next day outside an apartment complex. He didn't know where he was. Robbed. The next day when he replaced his phone, because he lost his phone in his wallet, uh, you know, the next day when he replaced his phone, he started getting notifications from Cash App that all the money had been withdrawn. I think it was $700. So, you know, these are the things you have to be careful and conscientious about in doing so. So these are the opinions of Dr. MJ Carter, not those of Ricky Smiley, Rita Brent, or other members of the Morning Show cast and crew. Ricky, thank you so much for the opportunity once again. And stick safe. Don't you dare go away. you listening to Dr. MJ on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. <laughs> All right, y'all. More Ricky Smiley Morning Show coming up. You liar. I believe him, yo. I don't know why, but I do. All right, Jerry Smiley, the morning show. Hey, it is about that time. 15 before the top of the hour, y'all. It is Man Law Violation Mondays with the one and only comedian extraordinaire special, K. Yep, 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 yep. So Never all young men, all young men ages, uh, let's, let's, let's just say uh, 15 and up. Yeah. All young men ages 15 and up. You need to be listening to this so you can know how to Move through life in these male streets properly without violating other men, okay? Or nature. Let's get started <laughs> with the man laws. <laughs> if you're keeping your girl car to drive while she at work, you got to put some gas in it and vacuum it out. Yes, sir. You have to. Yeah. That's the least you can do. You you sorry. Wash to. it too. You sorry son of a... That's the least you can do. <laughs> vacuum the damn car because you know it's nasty because women got dirty cars. 
And let the seat back, back up out. when you get out of it. Yeah, and let the seat back up when you get out of it. Ain't that right? We got, Thank you. We got a woman in here. So you appreciate that. Wow. Right? Now, a man is not allowed to scream if you see a snake. <laughs> you not. You can say, whoa. You react. You can say, whoa. Yeah. Damn. You, you can react. Damn. Yeah, you can react, but you better not scream. If you scream. <laughs> you can say, hey. Yeah. Oh, you say, oh. <laughs> you can say, oh. The <laughs> only way you're allowed to scream is if it's in your bed. And <laughs> now, if it's in your bedroom, you step in, you, now that's different. But then if it's under the cover, it might not be a snake. All right, uh, let's see. Ooh. Two men cannot go into a revolving door together. Nah. Nah. No, it, it got, it's got to have one complete spin. Yeah. Before you come walking your ass through there. Nah. Yeah, I often have to correct Rock T and Super Dave on that. Nah. They, I seen yeah, them going through a revolving door. And then when, door. Your boy, when your boy going through that, it's okay to keep pushing along, push it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, give it a good y'all, push. Both of y'all can't just walk in that thing together. It don't look right. Uh, <laughs> unless you're in the car by yourself or a room by yourself, you can't stick your tongue out to lick around the edges of the ice cream sandwich. You know how it starts nope. melting and you try to lick. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> no, 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 no. You got to start dude. off on them sides just yeah. where it won't do that. Now, if you by yourself, you can do what you want to do. But if you, you if there's another dude in there, no, not no. even if you're by yourself, you still gotta bite it, though. You can't. Leave. And then, and then when you go to Dairy Queen, tell them you don't want that much on there because it's gonna run. <laughs> yeah. If you go to Dairy Queen, say just give me a little bit and put some of that black stuff on there. That that. that and if you, you know, eat the ice cream Sunday and, and the and the ice cream start dripping and <laughs> getting down on you, you can't lick your yeah. finger. No. You can't lick and, the ice cream off get, your and finger. If you get got an ice after. cream, and if you got an ice cream sandwich, just go on bite it and get it over with. Don't don't play with. it. Okay, you can't put the whole thing in your mouth? Uh-huh. Oh. You can't put can't. the whole sandwich, ice cream sandwich in your mouth? No. Oh. Nah, you, 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 unless you, it's one you of them bite off it, Bite off it like it's a regular sandwich and go on, get the brain freeze and just get it out the way. Get it out the like way. A, eat it like a, a damn dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, speak, now, let's go back to the dark side. If your woman ever sees you get beat up in a one-on-one fight, you can never walk around like you have authority over her after that day. <laughs> can't Uh-oh. do it. No, because they now, don't respect yeah, you now gotta go beat somebody's yeah, ass and, and go to jail. Now, if six dudes jump you and you and you and you lose, that's different. But if one dude yeah. fights you and beats you up, yeah. and your woman is there, yeah. no, you you gotta, you gotta speak to her for, with respect from that day forward. Five for the voice. Go ahead. You got to cook and fold clothes. And then, and then if one dude if one dude beat you up and, and some change come out of your pocket, yeah, dog. Hell, no, you can't tell her nothing. And your shoe can't come off with that little loose floppy it sock. Not. And Rita, here's another one. Here's another one. You can never be <laughs> butt naked in a bed with a woman with just footies on. Men you wear footies. Socks off. That's not a good look. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't yeah, be in the yeah. bed butt naked. You can have on, a, on you can have on a very short Nike sock, but you can't have you okay. can't be butt naked and you got on footies and it got a pink ball on the back of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not the ball. <laughs> Them little furry, them little furry so- fuzzy them little, socks. Them little cheerleader socks. Yeah, you should never wear fuzzy socks as a man, ever. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be Bink, Bink sitting back there in production. Yep. Bink, with Bink, them Bink. fuzzy socks on. <laughs> hey, Bink. What the? Wait a minute. Bink, no, hey, wait a minute. Bink, don't fire back. Don't fire back. Don't fire back. It's sick. We got some all. Uh, <laughs> sometimes. Just sometimes. Oh. All the time. They got the blue oh, and man. white socks. Yeah, it is blue and white, though, but just sometimes. Just sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> Come on, Kate. Oh, when your woman asks you, do I look fat in this, the answer is always no. Yes. I don't care if your right. woman is 600 pounds. You like, uh-uh. You look yeah, good. you look all right. The answer is yeah. always no. <laughs> yeah. And no man should ever be the only one to bring his girl into a guy's only situation, whether that be a bachelor party a strip club outing, I wish uh, you, I, <laughs> guys get together. It's always Boy. awkward when you the one dude that show up with a girl. Boy. And it's like, come on, don't be that dude. Don't be Man, that I, dude. I hate it. I can't stand Don't be you that go, guy. Let me be quiet because I don't want to get drugs. Okay, let me be quiet. <laughs> you be all right, dog. There, 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 are some, there are some organizations where it's supposed to be, be, you know, be the organization. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or whatever, whatever Greek organization. And, and it's just always one. Then you got, you got the frat jacket. Throw around your girl. Oh. Damn. One dude. God. Damn. You got the fresh jacket throw around your girl, dog. Yeah. Hey, don't let Everybody him be the setup. Talk different. Everybody got to act different. It's just it's hey, weird. Hey, it's awkward. Talk, talk to my, you kicking it with the bro. Talk to my girl on FaceTime. <laughs> like, like, nah, bro. I'm, I'm kicking it with the bro. I'm, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Cat ass. <laughs> cat, cat as hell. Yeah. Cat as hell. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, dog. <laughs> they be mad. They don't like your ass. No more you don't talk to that girl on Facebook. All right. Ass, Last one. You can't be hesitant to open a can of biscuits because you're scared of that popping sign. <laughs> uh, what? Gary, you actually like that, don't <laughs> Yeah, honey. I'm Gary, you like opening up the can sure of biscuits? I sure do, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Chicken and Wampa, make it going down. John Lyon on the ones and twos. Hey, listen, uh, 11 minutes, 11 minutes after the hour, y'all joining us, joining us this morning is our renowned Vanderbilt professor, author of over 20 books, including bestsellers, Tears That We Cannot Stop, and uh, Jay-Z, Made in America. Please welcome the one and only Dr. Michael Eric Dyson, y'all. Come on. Good morning. Appreciate it. Oh, hey, Dr. man. Good morning. Good morning, my brother. How y'all doing this morning? Man, we good. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And uh, now there is a, a meme going around the internet that says DEI or diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, is the new N word. Uh, what do they mean? Uh, you know, and what do you think about it? I know they were saying that, uh, referencing that around the ba- the mayor of Baltimore. Uh, exactly. Uh, it, w- w- what is that all about? Yeah. Well. Well. You know. First of all, thanks for having me. And you're absolutely right. DEI is, in that fact, uh, uh, the new N-word, because, look, out of nowhere, they're talking about the mayor of Baltimore after that uh, horrific event the other day where the bridge collapsed. Uh, They're also speaking about it when they talk about uh, people at Harvard or at Michigan or any other school that are doing scholarship around the issue of race and trying to act like any concern about that is wrong. And then even Elon Musk was talking about it in regard to Boeing that the reason Boeing was failing is because they were focused on DEI. And we know that the report came out, said, no, y'all are more interested in money. So <clears throat> many right-wing conservatives have used the notion of DEI as suggesting that inferior black people are being hired for jobs out of their depth without the kind of skills that are necessary to do the jobs they do, when the reality is, is that the history of white supremacy has suggested that mediocrity is the preserve of many white people who don't get called on what they do, and as a result of that, trying to scapegoat black people and women and other people of color. Wow. Hmm. Well, Dr. Dyson, I got something that's kind of puzzling and perplexing to me. So a lot of young black people, including some rappers and other influencers, are supporting Donald Trump because they say they think he has swag and because he handed out checks during the pandemic. What do you make of this? I blame the Ricky Smiley show because clearly y'all ain't educating these young Negroes about what's going on in the real world. I'm being funny. Y'all do a heck of a job. That's why (laughs) I'm I'm glad on this morning. Look, the the, the point is this, is that if you think Donald Trump handed you a check during the pandemic, number one, you're ignorant about the political process. That's your money. That That ain't his money. And we already know by the court cases he's facing, he can't handle money. He don't know what to do with his dough. And then to think he has swag is so ridiculous. Again, when uh, Barack Obama was in office and had a tan suit on, then they went nuts and and lost their minds. Oh, my God, he's got too much swag. That's not appropriate for the president. Now we got young black people thinking because this guy is a bully and because he can say nasty things to people, he is the perfect Internet president because he uh, he traffics in insults as opposed to substantive political ideas. So it's tragic, and I, I got to push back on these young people to say, look at what you're talking about. This guy is a fascist, undermined American government, supports those who attacked the, uh, the government on January 6th. That is not the example of a president we want in office. Man, um, uh, and I, I want to ask you, what would you think, uh, what would Dr. Dr. King think about what's happening today in, uh, you know, in the right-wing conservative and they always using Dr. King's words to justify the attack on racial progress. Yes, sir. No, that's a great question. Yeah, it's, it's tragic. Dr. King issued 34 words when he was 34 years old. I have a dream one day my four little children will live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. So many right-wing conservatives use this to attack progress on race, to think that anybody who mentions blackness or Latino identity or indigenous identity is themselves a, an opponent of the kind of colorblind ideals he has. Uh, a young black conservative is now writing a book about colorblindness and attacking so-called woke ideology. This is a misuse and abuse of Martin Luther King Jr.'s idea. After all, he said it was a dream 
not a reality. It was an ideal after which he strived. It was not something that was yet real. So many conservatives won't admit that when King was alive, they opposed his ideas. Now that he's safely dead in his grave, they're trying to oppose, to use his ideas to suggest that those of us who are the legacies of Martin Luther King Jr.'s Jr. are the ones who are messing things up. And this is why we got to constantly oppose that kind of manipulation of King's rhetoric, especially as the 56th anniversary of his uh, death approaches. Always good to have you on. I love uh, watching you on the different uh, news channels. Uh, comedian sure. Rita Brent. You had a question, Rita? Yes, Dr. Dyson, uh, nice to meet you. Big fan of your work. So I, I am curious in how we can keep people encouraged to vote when folks feel like their vote doesn't count. You know, uh, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, but then lost the Electoral College to Trump. And I think a lot of folks are just wondering, does voting still make a difference in my personal life? So how do we encourage people in that sense? Yes, ma'am, it's a great point. Look, we got to tell young people and others who are new to voting, this is how it works. You don't always get what you vote for. You don't always win. You don't always prevail. Look at what people do who don't get the vote to turn out the way they want to. They storm the Capitol and do crazy stuff. They engage in an insurrection. But what we got to remember is black people, as bad as it is now, it's been far worse in the past. What about when you didn't have a choice between uh, two candidates, when you couldn't vote at all? So, and that wasn't that long ago. We're talking about, what, 1965 for most people in the South who could not vote, including my mom and other people. So the reality is, is that if why does voting make a difference? If if we had a different person in the White House, three people would not now be on the Supreme Court who That's are right. swaying it to the Say far it. right. I've and, been and, saying and, that and, for and years. Voted, right. It, when you talk about, uh, you know, when we did vote the way we did vote, you got a what? A black justice on the Supreme Court and a black woman in the White House uh, as vice president. So voting makes a difference and not just federally and nationally. It makes a difference locally. Who's your prosecutor? When something happens to your child, when the police attacks them or inappropriately uh, you know, um, uh, hurts them, who's going to make a difference there? A prosecutor, or somebody on the local level. Look at these state legislatures, which are reshaping American uh, politics. How? Because they're redrawing the maps. Who do you think redraws the maps? It is the local state legislator. 38 out of 50 of them are right-wing or Republican. So your vote makes a difference. You've got to stop this notion that because you didn't get what you wanted one time or two times while voting, that voting doesn't make a matter, doesn't make a difference. The fact is, voting is about the light bill. Voting is about the water. Voting is about the zoning district. Voting is about where you live. You've got to understand it makes a big difference. Hey, hey Dr. Dyson, it, it, it would be great to have you come on and, and especially in this election year, and start talking about on a regular on this morning show. I, I don't mean to put you on the spot because I don't know your scheduling. Do it without it, question, it, and would be my great honor. Y yes, sir. It, it, we miss having you on the show. When this morning show first started, you used to come to the studio with us in Dallas and would yes, drop sir. knowledge on us and giving us a, 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 a government class right there on the radio. And we was on the hip-hop station then, and uh, we yes. really, really need, need uh, uh, your voice to come and just articulate some of this stuff. And uh, we absolutely love you. I'm glad Pastor Hayne connected or reconnected us. And uh, it's, it's a blessing to have you. Dr. Uh, Dyson, let everybody know how you can be reached. Listen here, you can hit me on the Instagram, Michael Eric Dyson. Uh, you can hit me on uh, Twitter at, at Michael E. Dyson. And then I'm at uh, teaching at Vanderbilt <laughs> University. If y'all want to come out tonight, I'm at Rice University uh, tonight at 7 p.m., at Craft Hall 130, and I'm going to be talking about it. BHM, BLM, DEI, CRT, AI, AP, and MLK, alpha against, alphabets against American amnesia. I'm going to break this down, talk about why the white supremacy of this nation has to be opposed, why these governors are out here wilding out like DeSantis and Abbott trying to argue against our very being. That's why you've got to get out here and vote. So come check me out tonight. Hit me up on Instagram. I'm always available. Let's let's chop it up. Hey, hey, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna get I, I get so excited. I get so excited when you come on because I'm I'm one of your biggest fans. I got Thank to you. get get an Alpha Phi sponsored. Uh, you come down to Miles College. I'm gonna call Dr. Bobby Knight and get you to come down here, and we're gonna pack it out and videotape it because we got to get this word out because it is serious. Because the stuff that I'm seeing out here is something that we have never ever seen before so uh we just got to get people motivated and uplifted 
uh, uh, out encouraged to get out and vote. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. Hey, man, thank you, man. We love you. Thank you so much, my brother. It's Mark Morial, and this is the State of Black America. As president of the National Urban League, we're always concerned, always advocating for closing the racial wealth gap and the economic gaps in this country between haves and have-nots, between blacks, whites, and Latinos. We've got an opportunity to witness some of the most incredible human talent this past weekend, the men's Final Four, the women's basketball finals have showcased some of the most talented people in our country. These college athletes, men and women, at the highest levels, played with great passion and skill as they fought hard to find their way into the finals. And now the finals on the men's side is locked, on the women's side, almost locked. But what this raises is a very important new issue. When we watch college basketball or college football, are we watching an amateur sport? Are we watching something that is very different from college sports of 20, 30, or 40 years ago? I believe now is the time for there to be a serious discussion about revenue sharing for college athletes. Yes, the Supreme Court allowed name, image, and likeness, allowed individual players to negotiate money through their schools with donors and supporters for the use of their name, their image, and their likeness. And this has benefited some schools Not necessarily, or rather some players, but not all players. Now is the time for there to be a real discussion about revenue sharing. The revenue sharing of the billions generated by the television contract. The billions generated by merchandise because of the visibility of these players and the talent of these players. Let me give you some examples. College head coaches. College head coaches are now being paid like corporate CEOs. At FSU, Florida State University, the head coach will make $10 million for the fifth year of his contract in 2024, a heavy leap from his base salary of $5.55 million in his fourth year. The new Alabama coach makes $10 million a year. Ohio State, $9.5 million a year. And add to that incentives and housing payments and television arrangements, and now we see college coaches in many instances being paid better than professional coaches. Why shouldn't there be a system for players, many of whom are African American, to share in this so that they'll have wealth to begin their lives? Now is the time for this discussion. The NCAA has walked to some extent in this direction, but their proposals don't go far enough. Closing the racial wealth gap Closing the economic gaps in this country is something that has to remain paramount. And we've got to rethink college sports and recognize that today it is no longer the amateur sports game of 20, 30, or 40 years ago, but it is something very different. I'm Mark Morial. That's the State of Black America. And please follow me across all social media on X, on Facebook, on Instagram. Follow us every day to be a continuing part of this conversation. And check out the State of Black America report for 2024 at stateofblackamerica.org. I'll see you next week on the radio.